see what God's word says. Philippians chapter 2. We need to remember the lost. If we are going to bring holiness back to All Hallows Eve, if we are going to start paying attention more to Friday, November 1st, as All Saints Day, rather than Thursday, October 31st, as a night of wickedness and evil, we need to remember the lost. Look at Philippians chapter 2, verses 14 through 16. And I'll just read the first part of 16. Philippians chapter 2, starting at verse 14. Paul said, Do everything without complaining or arguing, so that you may become blameless and pure, children without fault in a crooked and depraved generation, in which you shine like stars in the universe as you hold out the word of life. Be the example. Shine Jesus into the darkness. Let people who know no Savior know Jesus. People are living in darkness. And the scriptures are very clear that there is a distinct difference between those who live in darkness and those who live in light. Now just follow along with me. I'm just going to read these passages one after another. You might want to jot them down so that you can read them at home yourself. John chapter 3, verse 19. John 3, 19, said, Jesus said, This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people loved darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Paul said this in Romans chapter 13, verse 12. Romans 13, 12. The night is nearly over. The day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. To the Corinthians, in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. 2 Corinthians 6, 14. Paul declared, do not be yoked to unbelievers. For what does righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? Light and darkness cannot be in the same room. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 8. Ephesians 5, 8 says, For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. And then a longer passage I want to read from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, Verses 4 through 8. 1 Thessalonians 5, 4 through 8 declares, But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness, so that this day should surprise you like a thief. You are all children of the light and children of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So then, let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be awake and sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night. And those who get drunk, Get drunk at night, but since we belong to the day, let us be sober, putting on faith as, and love as a breastplate and the hope of salvation as a helmet. We don't belong to the darkness. If we belong to Christ, we belong to the day. And then Peter said this in, in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. He said, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. And then the one verse that really is the kicker of them all. 1 John 1.6. Listen to what John tells Christians. 1 John 1.6. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness... We lie, and we do not live out the truth. If we claim to be Christians, and yet walk in darkness, we're liars, and we're not speaking the truth. Folks, please understand, as we approach this celebration this week, that there are people out there who are in darkness. There are people out there who are lost. And if we our children of the light, if we are shining like stars in a darkness, letting them see Jesus, let's let them see Jesus. We've lived among, uh, we live among people who don't know Christ. And to them, death is mysterious. To them, death is terrifying. 
And they have a desperate need in this dark world to grab onto something. And so here we are, according to Paul's writing to the Philippians, shining like stars in a dark place. We want them to see the light of Jesus Christ. We want to hold out the word of life to those who are perishing. Now there's some aspects of Halloween that are natural starting points for conversations Christians can have with non-Christians. For instance, why do you think Halloween is such a dark holiday? Or we could ask someone, just point blank, do you believe in ghosts? And then our answer can be, I do, but my ghost is holy. My ghost is from God. My ghost gives light. Are you afraid of death? You know, I think Christians need to ask themselves these questions sometimes too. Halloween provides a rare opportunity to discuss the reality of, our, of a spiritual world with people who often would never want to talk about it. But the door is kicked wide open this week for us to talk about those things that are paranormal, those things that are supernatural, those things that are otherworldly. And the Christian has the upper hand in this because Jesus Christ is supernatural and because Jesus Christ is from another world. We can claim the light instead of the darkness. And so we can use this as an opportunity to speak to people who are lost. Secondly, we can use it as an opportunity to remember the heroes of our own faith. Again, in Philippians 2, verse, starting at verse 16, I only read the first part of the verse. Let me pick up and read the, read the verse again and continue. As you hold out the word of life, shine like stars. As you hold out the word of life is what Paul's saying. He said, in order that I may boast on the day of Christ that I did not run or labor for nothing. But even I am being poured out like a drink offering on the sacrifice and service coming from your faith. I am glad and rejoice with all of you, and so you should be glad and rejoice with me. There are heroes in our faith. The Apostle Paul was one of them. It's going into chapter 3, verse 16, just pulling this one verse out when he speaks of himself. In, in Philippians 3, 16, Paul says, Let us live up to what we have already attained. Let us live up to those things that we have already found in Christ. Since All Saints Day was intended to celebrate heroes of the faith, it's a perfect time for us to look to those who have been faithful to God. It's a perfect time to go to Hebrews 11 and to study this roll call of faith. It's a perfect time to remind ourselves of Christians who gave their lives for, for the work of Christ within the scriptures and then Christians who died afterwards. It's a perfect time to look at a book like Fox's Book of Martyrs and discover how people laid their lives down on the line. It's a perfect time for us to understand that even in the 21st century, there are Christians today who are dying because they will not renounce Jesus Christ. They are the heroes of our faith. And we need to remember them. We need to honor them. We need to pattern ourselves after the faithfulness that they have exhibited already. Finally, we need to remember those who die in the Lord. Philippians chapter 2, verses 20 and 21. I'm sorry, Philippians 3. I gave you the wrong chapter. I hear the pages flipping back, and they should be, still be right there in Philippians 3. Philippians chapter 3, verses 20 and 21. Paul's talking about worldliness and worldly attitudes and worldly people. And then he says this in verse 20, speaking to the Christians. He says, but our citizenship is in heaven. And we eagerly await a savior from there. The Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control, will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. We've got something to look forward to, but we need to remember those who have already obtained that citizenship in heaven. October 31st is also historically called Reformation Day. It is the day that Martin Luther went to the chapel door and nailed his sheets of paper on that door that contained 95 theses, 95 arguments against the Roman Catholic Church. One of the most important aspects of the Reformation was the emphasis that all believers are saints. And you don't have to pay for sainthood. No, we're all saints and we are all citizens of heaven. 
And it's the destination for all of us who are faithful to God. Do you look forward to seeing your loved ones again? I hope you do. I hope for those of you who have had believing family members die, that you can agree with the scriptures when it says, Blessed are those who die in the Lord. I hope that we can see these godly people who have gone before us, even in our own lives, that we can, we can understand that we will see them again. But, please, understand this above anything else. Don't make that your reason for wanting to go to heaven. It's very emotional when we bury a loved one. Whether it's a, a, a father or a mother or a spouse, or whether it's one of our own children. It just jerks us to pieces. And the one hope that we have, the one understanding we have, is like David said, I cannot bring them back to me, but I will go to them. I'll see them again on the other side. And sadly, there are some people who think the only reason they have for going to heaven is to be with their own loved ones again. That's as important as that is, as hopeful as that is, as certain as that is for those who died in the Lord, there's another reason and a far greater reason for us wanting to go to heaven. It's because we will be with Jesus face to face. We will see the one who is not just King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We will see the one who is not just Savior and the Messiah and Redeemer. But we will see the one who has dared to call us his friends. And he is going to welcome us home. That is why we go to heaven. There's a little side benefit if we get to see our loved ones. But let me tell you, the reason we go to heaven and the reason we look forward to heaven is because we will be with Jesus forever and ever. Amen. No tears. No crying. No darkness. No shame. No sorrow. No fear. No evil. But a time to reflect on what Jesus has done for us. We will be with our loved ones who have died in the Lord under the perfect lordship of Jesus Christ. And the scriptures say this, and we will be forever with them. Because of Jesus. Because of Jesus. So let's remember the lost. Let's remember the heroes of the faith. Let's remember those who die in the Lord. But let's also remember this. John Piper said it as well as anyone I've ever heard. He said, outside of God's care, there is only wrath. But there is a refuge from the wrath of God, namely God. The safest place from the wrath of God, the only safe place, is God. Come to God. Take refuge in God. Hide in the shadow of His wings. And know that there's a reason to look forward to heaven. Let's go to that next slide. May God, may God use us to be a bright star in the darkness. May God use us to be his light in a dark place. And I can guarantee you this week it's going to be very dark for some people. One of the most frustrating things I think I've seen this week was a post on, on, on Facebook that said this. Halloween is not just a holiday. Halloween is a way of life. That's scary. And that's sad. Because there are some people, some people, who would rather live in the darkness than in the light of God. Our job is to show them otherwise. Our job is to show them the supernatural love of the Father. To show them Jesus. To be light. Piercing the darkness. And to make the decision that if we belong to Jesus, we cannot dabble with darkness. We can't. Because the Bible is very clear. If we do that, we're lying about who we are. Oh, let's be light. And let's shine the light of Jesus to a world that is black without him. Let's show them 
the hope and the joy and the purpose we have in Christ.